We all wish for the days of the classic MMORPG experience, whether it be pure nostalgia, challenging mechanics, or social dynamics in a well thought out, no pay to win experience, players have yearned for that next MMO to fill the void. One that doesn't just hand out trophies to every person who logs in, but instead challenges players, forces them to work together or against each other to achieve common goals, giving you an extremely satisfying feeling when you accomplish something big within said game. Those days have been behind us for years now, every new MMORPG getting us extremely excited just to be filled with disappointment by half-assed mechanics and false promises. But what if I told you there is an MMORPG in development that is trying to bring back that massive, fun, challenging, social-oriented experience we have dreamed of playing once again with no pay-to-win attached? That MMO is Ashes of Creation, a game that is in active development about to enter its second run of alpha testing. A game built on Unreal Engine 5, showing off the beauty of the next generation of graphics as it seeks to bring a whole new generation of gamers to the genre. The game itself is being developed by Intrepid Studios, a company that started off just as a team of a few talented developers, led by Steven Sharif, a man who had zero game development experience but was an active MMO player who had the money and the ideas to make the studio work. A man just like us tired of seeing the genre continue to crumble, so he gathered up a team of some experienced industry veterans and got to work. Ashes of Creation didn't always look like it does today though. Eight years ago, Ashes started off on Unreal Engine 4 using store-bought placeholder assets really looking to just get the game off the ground. Intrepid was just a small indie studio with less than 20 team members looking to build the largest and most complex MMO of its time. The gameplay that you're looking at was put together way back back in 2016. It's what a lot of us built our dreams off of, not knowing how long we would actually have to wait for what could potentially be one of the biggest MMORPGs of all time. <laughs> But here we are eight years later and closer than ever at finally being able to jump into the world of Vera, especially now that we know we can expect Alpha 2 to start in October. There seems to be a lot of new faces coming in, so you usual followers may find this video a bit different than what you're used to. But with Alpha 2 right around the corner, now is as good of a time as any to bring people up to speed on what Ashes of Creation is all about. As time's gone on, much like Ashes of Creation's graphics, so too did the developers working on the game change and evolve. And while the majority of the founding dev team is no longer working on the project, the original vision for the game has never changed and the studio has never been better, as they now have nearly 200 very talented associates and are continuing to hire even in these unfortunate times where the majority of the gaming industry seems to be laying people off. Ashes of Creation and Intrepid Studios have come a very long way since their record-breaking Kickstarter days. Yes, Ashes of Creation started as a Kickstarter, raising $3.2 million with nearly 20,000 backers. Back then, no one had heard of the name Steven Sharif, Intrepid Studios, or Ashes of Creation, but when you see an MMO being advertised as one said to put the massive back in massively multiplayer, you get excited. Because the MMORPG community has been waiting for a very long time for that next big MMO to heal the genre back to full health, and Ashes of Creation is probably as close as we can get for a very long time. Ashes of Creation's Kickstarter pushed the idea that the game is all about player choice. Civilization grows based on what players decide. The world is shaped by the players. There are no factions restricting your friends and enemies. Your grudges, your wars, your peace are real things created by you. You yourself, your friends, your guild, and every other player out there on your server are meant to shape the story of that world and the content within. Something that back in 2016 felt near impossible and was a big reason of doubt with a lot of people. There have been many MMOs over-promising and under-delivering features, so why should Intrepid be any different? And how does a studio even bring something like this to life in a multiplayer game? They do this with what are called nodes. The node system is something that will truly truly make Ashes of Creation come to life and set it apart from its competitors. When you first step foot into the world of Vera on launch, the world will seem 
a bit empty. There will be no giant cities, no small towns outside of the player starting areas, just this vast landscape filled with the ruins of what was once a great civilization turned to dust by what is known as the apocalypse. But as players set out on their adventure and begin questing in their starting areas, gathering resources for crafting or slaying nearby monsters, and continuing to spread out, you will gain your usual XP. But you will also contribute XP to that invisible node that you're currently reside in. When that node, which is currently known as stage 0, aka the wilderness stage, finally hits level 1, you will notice some small changes. Node level 1 is what is called the expedition, and its name really explains itself. It's a small expedition of NPCs that appear in an area where a city could eventually bloom changing up the landscape around you. These NPCs will have some tents set up, some campfires, maybe you'll find a vendor or two here, but nothing will really feel permanent. Just a small expedition out into the wilderness looking for their new home. Within this encampment, you may find some quest givers pointing you in the direction of some newly spawned objectives that came with leveling the node. Maybe even a small story arc or world event will accompany the arrival of these new explorers. As a player, it will be up to you to decide, is this the location you want to make your home? Does the surrounding area really fit with your needs as a player? You could continue here, working and achieving XP that will continue to help level up this area, or well, you could explore further into the wilderness and perhaps find a home more fitting for you. Whatever you choose, you will continue to contribute XP wherever you go to the node you are in. These expeditions are just the beginning, as a player can continue to progress and these nodes will continue to level from wilderness to expedition, to encampment, to village, to a town, to a city, to a full-blown metropolis. And with each level comes tons of new content, crafting stations in that developed city, player housing, access to freeholds, new quests and commissions, and a wide variety of events that respond to player activity, potentially kicking off story arcs, which could in turn change the server forever. These nodes will have more content than just what resides inside it though. You'll start to see larger changes within what is known as that node's zone of influence, basically the surrounding area of your node that it directly impacts. Dungeons may be unlocked, new NPCs will spawn, new objectives for players to participate in will pop up, roads will be established allowing for faster caravan transport, nodes are just the beginning of your adventures. Beyond nodes, Ashes of Creation isn't really going out of its way to reinvent the wheel. They are not planning on making groundbreaking systems that flip the whole idea of an MMORPG on its head. They are trying to refine what has been good about past MMOs and bringing them back with a modernized approach. This ranges from things such as open world dungeons and raiding, caravans, massive amounts of naval content, castle sieges, wars, an extremely diverse crafting system, and all of that fun stuff you've come to expect in these games. And all of these systems will be tied into each other as well. Ashes of Creation's branding itself a PVX MMO, meaning a server will consist of both PvP and PvE activities that may interact with each other. Your guild could be taking down a boss and may need some extra PvP player protection to prevent other guilds from interfering. Players and guilds will look to control areas for crafting resources that may result in skirmishes, and the PvE content in itself is locked behind nodes, which if you want to change some of the content you are getting, it may require some organized PvP to siege that node and start over. Ashes of Creation is going to take players working together to achieve common goals, which in my opinion is one of the biggest things lost in modern MMOs. The social aspect has faded away, and these once massive games that heavily required player cooperation can now be played solo as they have catered to a more casual audience. Those social pieces that are now lost were some of the best parts of these games, and the best way to meet new players and form new alliances. You will not see a group finder or a raid finder in Ashes of Creation. Players will need to interact with each other and socialize to form these parties once again. World events could happen that shut down node services, requiring the cooperation and planning of many players coming together to get it done, and hopefully Intrepid Studios finds the right balance between all of these systems to make it feel new and refreshing, but also bring back what made old MMOs so special. For your character, well, you will be able to set out on your adventures with one of the nine races. The Kalar and the Veiloon humans, the Dunir and the Nikua dwarves, the Vek and the Renkai orcs, the Pyre and the Empyrean elves, or the mysterious Tolnar, who are said to be a species even evolved from the four main races as they took shelter underground for thousands of years when the world of Vera was burning. 
for your class, Intrepid is taking a more traditional approach as you start out your journey, but adding a unique twist into it as you level up. To start, you'll pick from one of eight primary archetypes, Tank, Cleric, Mage, Rogue, Bard, Fighter, Ranger, and Summoner. From what we've seen so far, these seem to be your traditional classes that you can expect. Tanks taking large amounts of damage and holding aggro, Clerics being your healer, Bard being your buff support, along with your variety of ranged and melee DPS. But what makes Ashes of Creation's class system stand out a little is your secondary archetype. Selecting a secondary unlocks the possibility of 64 unique classes for Ashes of Creation, and that second class will augment your abilities, changing up how they look and feel on the battlefield. On the combat side of thing, Ashes of Creation is aiming for a hybrid of tab target in action combat, giving players a bit of control over how they like to play. Play. This allows you to choose between an action style camera that allows for camera movement and attacks to be controlled by the mouse, having you click to attack, or you could go with a more traditional tab target that you find in MMOs like World of Warcraft, having you tab cycle through your target, and having a more automated attack. With these two cameras also comes a variety of abilities that fit both the action and tab side of things, which players can choose to invest skill points in to unlock. Combat is something that Intrepid really wants to get right and have proven they will continue to take feedback and make changes until they do so. As we've already seen several iterations of combat over the course of the development based off player reception. In the last seven years since the beginning of its development, Ashes of Creation has gone through a few testing phases, starting with Alpha Zero, then Alpha One, and with Alpha Two, which is about to launch in October of this year. They've even had a battle royale game called Apocalypse for a while that gave Intrepid Studios some good data to work with when it comes to servers, along with helping them understand the direction they wanted to take their combat. Alpha 2 though is where, in my opinion, the game development of Ashes of Creation truly began. Prior to it, Intrepid Studios was a small team with big goals. The prior tests really got to work out some of the backend systems of the game and helped pave the future for what Ashes could become, but the content within those tests, including the world map we played in, was all temporary. Alpha 2 will be the first time we step foot into the real Vera and see the game Intrepid has been promising us for years that they will bring to life. In the coming weeks leading up to Alpha 2, you may find many, many videos on this channel breaking down the system classes, races, and the world we're expected to run into in Alpha 2. So be sure to click that subscribe button and follow me on Twitch if you want to learn as much as you possibly can heading into the beginning of what the true start of Ashes of Creation is. From this point on, things will be moving very quick and you will want to be ready for when your time comes to step through the divine gateways into the world of era.